Hello children, welcome to grade 8 mathematics classroom. Today we are going to talk about the 30th lesson of your mathematics textbook that is tessellation. So quickly take out your mathematics textbooks and turn to page number 159. There you can find uh, the lesson tessellation. Right. First, before moving to the lesson, I thought of telling you what you are going to learn after studying this lesson. So, by studying this lesson, you will be able to identify what regular tessellations and semi-regular tessellations are, select suitable polygons to create regular and semi-regular tessellations, and create regular and semi-regular tessellations. Right. Now I am going to give you some pictures. Just check whether you can see a pattern there. Are these tessellations? We will see. Here we can see a giraffe in this picture. So we can see a pattern in his skin. So is it a te tessellation? Just think a little bit. Now here I have got a tortoise. What can you see there? Can you see a pattern? So once again think, is that a tessellation? Right, now what is this? Yes, it is a beehive. Isn't that so? So here uh, we, we have two pictures of a beehive. And what can you see there? Can you see a shape that you already know? Yes, we can see some hexagons there. Isn't that so? So, is that a tessellation? We'll see. Right, these are some of the things you can see in your day-to-day -day life. Those are there in the nature. So, we'll now move on to some man-made tessellations. So, first of all, have a look at this picture. Here, you can see two beds with beautiful bed sheets. Isn't that so? There we can see two types of tessellations using squares. They have used different colors to create beautiful patterns. Isn't that so? So are these tessellations? Yes, they are. They are tessellations. Here they have used the shape of square to create beautiful tessellations. Isn't that so? So, now can you remember the tessellations you have created in grade 7? Your teacher might have asked you to make beautiful wall hangings uh, as an activity in grade 7. Isn't that so? So, you also may have created beautiful tessellations in grade 7. So, we will move on to some more tessellations. Here, I have got a chair. What can you say about the material they have used uh, to decorate the chair? They are also, uh, can you see a tessellation? They are, uh, there we can see two types of figures in that uh, material and those figures are nicely designed as a tessellation. Isn't that so? So now look at the second one. What is that? Yes, it's a cushion. Isn't that so? So, they are also, they have used a material with a beautiful pattern. So, are these tessellations? Have you gone through these in your day-to-day -day life? Think a little bit. Now, what are these? Now, it's uh, here in this picture, we can see a kitchen. Isn't that so? Now, here I want you to have a look at the floor tile of the kitchen. What can you see there? I can see some squares and rectangles and the squares and the rectangles are nicely uh, placed as a pattern. Isn't that so? So once again we can see a beautiful tessellation there. Uh, the rectangles are in two colors, squares are in another color. They have nicely placed the squares and rectangles to create a beautiful tessellation. Right. Now, have you seen these in your day-to-day -day life? What are these? 
here we can see some bricks isn't that so they are uh, they have fixed these uh, on the floor to create a beautiful pattern you may have noticed these uh, in park or um, walking paths you may have noticed these types of tessellations so we'll move on to another one here once again i can see some hexagons there at the same time there are some squares as well so once again they have uh, placed hexagons and squares to create a beautiful patterns isn't that so so can you consider this pattern as a tessellation think a little bit think about the things you have learnt in grade 7 and then just think a little bit can you consider these patterns as tessellations right now have a look at this picture here uh, there is a wall isn't that so you can see some bricks there and uh, you can see the shape of rectangles there and it's formed nicely uh, it's creating a beautiful pattern once again we can consider these as tessellations isn't that so now what about this have a good look at this picture here i can see two types of patterns first one is uh, they are on the floor can you see there is a there is a mat on the floor so in the mat i can see some rectangles in two different colors white red rectangles and black rectangles so they have arranged those rectangles to create a beautiful pattern once again it is also a tessellation now have a look at the wall what can you see can you see a pattern there i can see a pattern what about you i can see some semicircular shapes uh, some rectangular shapes some triangular shapes they have beautifully uh, fixed those shapes to create a beautiful pattern once again that is also a tessellation right now have a look at this roof here i can see some triangles in this roof I have another picture for you uh, according to the same roof uh, in both pictures you can see triangles in on the roof so those triangles also create a beautiful tessellation isn't that so right now we have gone through some examples for tessellation so can you remember what you have learnt in grade 7 what is tessellation we can say that's an arrangement of shapes you can use one or more shapes but there is a must what is that you should not have gaps or overlaps between two shapes in a tessellation so we can define tessellation as covering a certain space using one or more shapes in a repeated pattern without gaps and without overlaps is called tessellation i'll say it once again covering a certain space using one or more shapes in a repeated pattern without gaps and without overlaps is called tessellation right by now we know what tessellations are so we'll um, have a look at some more tessellations and we'll try to identify what shapes they have used in these tessellations right have a look at the first one there i can see some triangles the triangles are colored in two different colors isn't that so some are colored in red and some are colored in yellow uh, to create a beautiful pattern so they have used just one shape and in two different colors that is also a tessellation then have a look at the second tessellation second figure 
once again they have used only triangles but, but this time they have used four different colors to create this tessellation to create a pattern this pattern is called a tessellation using one shape now have a look at this uh, pattern here once again we uh, once again we have only squares but in two different colors here we can see yellow and dark ash squares isn't that so so they have changed the colors to create a beautiful pattern once again that is also a tessellation so we'll move on to another one have a look at this once again we have a pattern only with squares this time they have colored the squares in three different colors yellow orange and red right they have used these colors once again to create a beautiful pattern that is also a tessellation right what can you say about this picture here you can't explain the shape of the uh, figures they have used because it's not a shape that you have learned in mathematics in, at school but they have used the same shape throughout the uh, picture isn't that so therefore we can consider this also as a tessellation to make it more beautiful they have used more colors isn't that so right once again there is a pattern here here we can see uh, only curve edges in this pattern and they have colored uh, the patterns in blue and yellow have you noticed that they have used only one uh, shape throughout the pattern okay right once again this is also a tessellation right now what about this here i can notice three types of shapes i can see a square i can see some triangles i can see some hexagons they have colored the hexagon in yellow they have colored the squares in blue and they have colored the triangles in red isn't that so right once again we can consider it as a tessellation right now have a look at the other picture here i can see some squares triangles and some quadrilaterals isn't that so now the triangles are in green color and the squares are in uh, brown color and uh, the quadrilaterals are in gray color right so uh, once again we can consider that one also as a tessellation right now we have uh, gone through so many examples for tessellation so now we are going to talk about the types of tessellations in grade 7 you have learnt on two types of tessellations can you remember those yes you have learnt on pure tessellations and semi pure tessellations so this year also we are going to learn on two types of tessellations those are regular tessellations and semi regular tessellations so up to now we are going to learn four types of tessellations those are pure tessellation semi pure tessellation regular tessellation and semi regular tessellation right we will start with pure tessellation that topic is discussed in grade 7 also but we'll go through the things you have already learned then it will be easy for you to catch up with the new uh, lesson contents okay right now what is a t pure tessellation is so first of all we'll define a pure tessellation we can define a pure tessellation as a tessellation consists of only one shape that means we are using only one shape to create these pure tessellations right we'll go through some examples have a look at this 
the complete figure is filled with triangles in two colors you can see triangles in blue color and some triangles are in red color isn't that so now we have used two colors but the only shape you have used throughout the tessellation is triangles right now here as i have told you before we have used triangles in two different colors blue color triangles and red color triangles right we'll move on to another example now here we are having once again we are having only triangles but in two different colors what are the colors we have we have pink color triangles and triangles in light blue isn't that so right now once again it's a beautifully created tessellation so we'll move on to the next one once again we have only triangles there we can name those triangles as right angle triangles isn't that so you have learned the types of triangles in previous grades right now once again here we have right angle triangles of two different colors uh, some are in yellow color and some are in red color right now have a look at this picture what is the shape that you can see yes those are quadrilaterals isn't that so now throughout the uh, picture we have only uh, the same shape but in different colors there are quadrilaterals in blue color there are quadrilaterals in red color and some quadrilaterals are there in yellow color and some are there in green color isn't that so once again we can consider it as a pure tessellation because we are they have used only one shape throughout the pattern so they have used only one shape therefore we can name it as a pure tessellation right now have a look at this one what is the shape that you can see there yes once again you are correct here we can see only rectangles isn't that so the shape the shape they have used is rectangles but in two different colors some are in blue and some are in green right as they have used only one shape once again we can say it uh, it is also an example for pure tessellations right now have a look at this one here we have only squares uh once again they have colored in two different colors blue dark blue and light blue right we have got only squares therefore we have used only one shape to create this tessellation so we can say this is also an example for pure tessellation right now have a look at this pattern here what is the shape you can you can see have you noticed the shape how many sides are there in that shape we'll count 1 2 3 4 5 there are five sides in that shape so the shape we have used is called a pentagon right now here we have used only pentagons in several colors uh, as i have mentioned you before if we have use only one shape to create a tessellation we can name that tessellation as a pure tessellation now therefore we can say this is also a also an example for pure tessellations right now look at this picture when you are looking at this picture what comes to your mind can you remember the bee hive i showed you in previous slides is it in the same shape yes it is because in bee hive we have noticed some hexagons here also this pattern is created using hexagons here we can see hexagons in three different colors some are in green some are in yellow and some are in 
red. Therefore, the only shape you have used here is hexagons. Once again, if you have used only one shape throughout the pattern or throughout the tessellation, we can say this tessellation is an example for pure tessellation. Right. Now have a look at this one. Once again, we can see only hexagons throughout the pattern. Isn't that so? Uh, so there are no overlaps, no gaps between shapes. Therefore, it's a tessellation. Uh, the hexagons are colored in three different colors. We can see blue color hexagons, yellow color hexagons and red color hexagons. Once again, uh, we can say they, are, they have used only one pattern or one shape throughout the pattern or throughout the uh, tessellation. Therefore, this is also an example for pure tessellations. Right. Now have a look at this one. We are creating a tessellation using only one shape. Right. Uh, here also we have used only one shape. So we can say this is also an example for pure tessellations. Right. What can you say about this picture? Here we can't say a name for the shape they have used. Have a look at the shape. This is the shape that we have used throughout the picture. We have colored the same shape in diff many different colors to create a beautiful pattern. But still we are using the same shape throughout the pattern. Therefore, throughout the tessellation we are having the same shape. That means this is also an example for pure tessellations. Now what can you say about this one? At once when you just look at the picture you might think oh they have used two different patterns to, or two different shapes in this pattern or in this tessellation. We'll see have they used two different shapes? I'm having doubt on that. We'll see this is the shape that they have used. Isn't that so? So what about the other shape you can see? Uh, they have rotated the same shape and once again fixed it. Right. Now that means uh, throughout this pattern also they have used the same shape. That means in this tessellation we can notice only one shape in many different colors. Therefore, we can say uh, this is also an example for pure tessellations. Right. Now we have discussed many things on pure tessellations. We have discussed almost all the things you have discussed in grade 7. So we will summarize the things we have learned under pure tessellations. First we said a uh, pure tessellation is a tessellation uh, created using only one shape. Both rectilinear shapes and curved shapes can be used to create pure tessellations. Right. Now that is about pure tessellations. Then in grade 7 we have discussed on semi-pure tessellations. So once again we are going to recall the memory on semi-pure tessellations now. Now what are semi-pure tessellations? Those are also tessellations but this time semi-pure tessellation consists of two or more shapes. Pure tessellation had only one shape throughout the pattern or throughout the tessellation but here in, in semi-pure tessellation you can use two or more shapes. So we will define semi-pure tessellations as a tessellation consists of two or more shapes. Right, we will move on to some examples. Now have a look at this picture. What are the shapes used in this tessellation? What can you see? You may be correct. We will check. Ah, this is the first shape we can see. What is that shape? That is a square. Next we have used parallelograms. Now 
We have used squares and paragraphs throughout this tessellation. We have used two different shapes. Therefore, we can say it belongs to uh, the type of semi pure tessellations. Right. Now, have a look at this tessellation. Now, what are the shapes that you can see there? We can see squares. We can see equilateral triangles. Isn't that so? Uh, there are squares in two different colors, in blue and green. There are equilateral triangles, once again, in two different colors, in green and blue. Uh, now, we can say uh, throughout this tessellation, we have used two different shapes. Therefore, if we, have, if we have used two or more different shapes, it belongs to the type of semi uh, semi pure tessellations. Therefore, we can say this is an example for semi pure tessellations. Right. Now, have a look at this one. Now, what are the shapes you can notice here? We'll take one by one. Right. Now, it's a rectilinear uh, plane figure. It's like a star, isn't that so? They have colored it in red color. The other shape we can see here is quadrilaterals. Right. Here we have used two different types of shapes. Therefore, we can say this is also an example for semi pure tessellation. Right. Now, have a look at this picture. Now, what are the shapes you can see there? We'll see. Some shapes are in yellow color. Some shapes are in gray color. Some shapes are in light blue color. So, we'll take one by one. There we can see squares in the pattern or in the tessellation. And then we can say hexagons in this tessellation. Finally, we have triangles in this tessellation. So, we have got three types of shapes uh, in the tessellation. Therefore, we can name it as a semi pure tessellation. Right. Now, we have discussed more about semi pure tessellations. So, uh, that is also a lesson you have learned in grade 7. So, what, are, what were they are in semi pure tessellations? First, we said semi pure tessellations consist of two or more shapes. And then we said uh, in semi pure tessellations, we have both rectilinear and curved shapes. We can use both of them. Right. Now, we have discussed uh, what pure tessellations and semi pure tessellations are. In grade 7, finally, we, you have discussed how to create beautiful patterns uh, using the knowledge of tessellations. So, we will go through some patterns that you may have created in grade 7. Right, now I am going to create a beautiful pattern. Have a look at these slides. Right, I have used just a shape to create the uh, tessellation. Throughout the te tessellation, I can notice only one shape. Now, by now you know uh, what name you can give to this tessellation? What is the name that you can give? Yes, that is a pure tessellation because throughout the tessellation you have got only one shape. So, this is a pure tessellation. Right. Now, have a look at these pictures. These are the figures some of the students have created in grade 7 using the knowledge of tessellations. Isn't that so? The first one, those are like some fish. Isn't that so? The same figure is repeating without having gaps or overlaps. Right. Now, these are uh, here in the second picture, it's like an animal. But the same figure is repeated throughout the tessellation. Right. Now, both of them are pure tessellations. Right. Now, have a look at these ones. 
here also they have when when we talk about the first one it's like a veil isn't that so the same veil is there throughout the tessellation but in different colors second one here it's like birds once again the same bird is there in two different colors when you look at this one it's like a dog isn't that so the same a figure of dog is used in two different colors here what is the animal you can see it's like a bird the same bird figure is used to, throughout the tessellation but using some different colors right we'll move on to some more figures now these were the basic uh, figures you have used in tessellations first one we have only squares second one we have only triangles third one we have only hexagons but there is a difference first one have you noticed squares means all the sides are equal in length and all the interior angles are equal in magnitudes then what can you say about the triangles used in the second figure all the sides all three sides of the triangles are equal in length that means the interior angles of those triangles are equal in magnitude then what can you say about the final figure it consists of hexagons with all six sides are equal in length that means all the interior angles are equal in magnitudes therefore we can say these tessellations are consist of regular polygons right now from this point onwards we are going to move on to the grade 8 lesson right before uh, learning about the other two types of tessellation i want you to know about what regular polygons are you have already learned that but we will recall the memory what is a regular polygon we can define a regular polygon as a polygon with all the sides are equal in length and all the angles are equal in magnitude we'll take one by one first one is equilateral triangle there we have got three sides here all the sides are equal in length i have put uh, some strokes to mention that all three sides are equal in length then if all three sides are equal what uh, what happens to the interior angles those are also equal therefore uh, the magnitude of an interior angle should be equals to 60 degrees right we'll move on to another figure here we can see a square a figure consists of four sides now here all four sides are equal in length what can you say about the angles all four angles are equal in magnitude right the magnitude of the angles are equal so we can say magnitude of an interior angle is equals to 90 degrees then we'll move on to uh, the figure or rectilinear plane figure consists of five sides that is pentagon here i have mentioned a pentagon of all five sides are equal in length therefore we call it as a regular pentagon there we have uh, the magnitude of all five interior angles are also the same so the magnitude of an interior angle is equals to 108 degrees right next we'll move on to the rectilinear plane figure uh, with six sides that is hexagon when all six sides are equal we call it as the regular hexagon here all the length of all six sides are equal therefore the interior angles of all um, therefore the magnitude of all interior angles are equal so we can say the magnitude of one interior angle is equals to 120 degrees right then we'll have a look at uh, regular octagon octagon means uh, uh, once again a rectilinear plane figure consists of eight sides 
Uh, here it's a regular octagon that means all eight sides are equal in length. The magnitude of all interior angles are equal. So we can say uh, the magnitude of an interior angle is equals to 135 degrees. Right. Then we'll have a look at regular dodecahedron. Dodecahedron means uh, once again a rectilinear plane figure consists of 12 sides. As it's the regular dodecahedron, we can say all 12 sides are equal in length. Once again, uh, the magnitude of the interior angles are the same. So we can say the magnitude of one interior angle is equal to 150 degrees. Right. Now we have learned about uh, regular polygons. Now here we'll move on to the next session of the lesson. That is about regular tessellation. Right. Here what is regular tessellation? Previously we have learned on regular polygons. In regular tessellation we use only regular polygons. So first of all we will move on to the definition of regular tessellation. A tessellation created using only one regular polygonal shape is known as a regular tessellation. I will say it once again. A tessellation created using only one regular polygonal shape is known as a regular tessellation. And we says a vertex of one geometrical shape should not be on a side of another geometrical shape. I am going to discuss the second point later on. So we will take the first point that is a tessellation created using only one regular polygonal shape. Previously we have learnt about regular polygons. So here as I have told you in regular tessellations we are going to use only regular polygons. The most important thing is we are going to use only one regular polygon throughout the tessellation in regular tessellations. So we will move on to some examples. Have a look at this. Here we have used only equilateral triangles. Using equilateral triangles uh, we have created a beautiful tessellation. Here we have used two different colors black and red. Right. Now as I have told you equilateral triangle is a triangle uh, of all three sides are equal in length. And all three interior angles are equal in magnitude. Therefore, a equilateral triangle is a regular polygon. Here we have constructed this tessellation using only one regular polygon. Therefore, we can say this is a regular tessellation. Right. We will use some squares now. Have a look at this picture. Now we are creating a tessellation using only squares. Once again as I have told you square uh, is a rectilinear plane figure consists of four equal sides. Therefore a square is a regular polygon. That means here we have used one regular polygon throughout the tessellation. Therefore once again this is an example for a regular tessellation. Now here we are using pentagons not just pentagons these are regular pentagons that means all five sides are equal in length. Now I was just trying to uh, create a beautiful tessellation using regular pentagons. What has happened? I have some gaps between two shapes. Isn't that so? So can I make a tessellation using regular pentagons? No, I can't. Why? In tessellations, you should not have gaps or overlaps between two shapes. Now here, uh, between two figures, I have got some gaps. Therefore, I can't create a tessellation using regular pentagon. So that means using a regular pentagon, we cannot create a regular tessellation. 
right now here i have used regular hexagons that means all six sides are equal in length in these hexagons now what can you see we have created a beautiful tessellation using regular hexagons therefore we can see we can say that using regular hexagons we can create a regular tessellation therefore this is an example for regular tessellation now next i am going to move on to the second point that we have learned under regular tessellation that is a vertex of one shape should be coincide to the vertices of the other shapes right what does that means i am going to explain it now so have a look at these pictures here what can you see we'll take the first one there are uh, what can you say about the vertices they are all the vertices uh, coincide on one point then we'll have a look at the second one there we have only squares it's a regular tessellation once again all the vertices coincide on one point what can you say about the last one here we have only hexagons regular hexagons that means uh, it's also a regular tessellation and all the uh, vertices are coincide on one point i'll explain it furthermore right now have a look at this picture it's a regular tessellation using equilateral triangles we have colored the equilateral triangles in two colors red and light blue right now i have marked a point here what is this point okay it's the vertex point right all the uh, vertices of the triangles coincide in that point so this feature is a must in regular tessellations right what can you say about this picture here can you no notice a vertex point we have used some uh, equilateral triangles here therefore uh, it have to be a regular tessellation but can you notice a vertex point there we'll see the vertex of one uh, triangle is on the side of another triangle right therefore we can't have a proper vertex point there that means this cannot be taken as a regular tessellation so here i have asked you a question uh, this is not a regular tessellation why it is not a regular tessellation therefore we can say because a vertex of one shape is on the side of another shape therefore it's not a regular tessellation right once again there is a question for you so have a look at these pictures which figure represents a regular tessellation i have given you two figures both figures consist of squares that means all four sides are equal in length of those shapes so when we talk about regular tessellation uh, you should have uh, regular polygons here i have used regular polygons but one uh, figure consists of a regular tessellation the other figure consists of uh, other figure is not a regular tessellation so you have to choose which one is consists of a regular tessellation a or b we'll see have a look at picture a once again here we have got a regular polygon so no issue on the first uh, point so we have to think about the second point now all the vertices should coincide on one point so can you clearly mention a vertex point in figure a yes we can that means figure a consists of a regular tessellation right now we'll have a look at figure b what can you say about that that tessellation also consists of regular polygons it consists of squares but can you observe a vertex point there no uh, the vertex of one uh, polygon sits on 
the side of another polygon. Therefore, we can't notice a vertex point. That means it cannot be a regular tessellation. Right. Now we have learnt about regular tessellations. So we'll uh, once again uh, have a look at what we have learnt on regular tessellations. Right. When constructing a regular tessellation, each vertex of all the shapes should coincide on a vertex point. Some of the magnitudes of the angles around each vertex point is 360 degrees. If 360 degrees is divisible by the magnitude of an interior angle of a regular polygon, then using that regular polygon, we can create a tessellation. Right. Now we are going to create tessellations. Now we have got some instructions how to create a tessellation, how to create a regular tessellation. So we will create some regular tessellations. Right. There are only three types of shapes that we can use to create regular tessellations. We have got so many regular polygons but as we have noticed in previous slides using a regular pentagon we couldn't create a regular tessellation isn't that so as we have noticed previously we couldn't make we couldn't create a regular polygon using regular pentagons isn't that so uh, why is that the reason is if 360 degrees is not divisible by the magnitude of an interior angle of a regular polygon then we cannot construct regular te uh, tessellations using those regular polygons. So uh, as I have mentioned here we have we have only three shapes uh, or three regular polygons that can be used to create regular tessellations. So what are those three? First one is equilateral triangle. Here the uh, magnitude of the interior angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees therefore uh, 60 degrees multiplied by 6 is 360 degrees or else we can take it as 360 degrees divided by 6 it is 60 degrees therefore 60 is a uh, uh, 360 is a multiple of 60 therefore using equilateral triangles we can construct regular tessellations right here is a is an example for the regular tessellations we can use or we can create using equilateral triangles right next using squares also we can construct regular tessellations the reason is the magnitude of the interior angle of a square is 90 degrees. So we know that 90 degrees multiplied by 4 it, it is 360 degrees. Uh, therefore we can create a regular tessellation using squares. Now here I have mentioned the vertex point also. Right next one is regular hexagon. Once again the interior angle of a regular hexagon is uh, 120 degrees. So when we multiplied 120 by 3 it is once again 360 degrees. Therefore we can create a regular tessellation using regular hexagon. Here I have mentioned the vertex point also. Right now there is a question for you. We will read it. Can we construct a regular tessellation using regular pentagons? We will see. Now uh, the interior angle of a regular pentagon is 180 degrees. So when we multiply it by 3 that is 324 degrees. That is less than 360 degrees. So we will multiply uh, the interior angle by 4. Once again that is 432 degrees. That is greater than 360. So we can see we cannot make a regular tessellation using a regular pentagon. Right. Now uh, here as I, as I have told you there are only three uh, types of uh, regular tessellations uh, that we can 
create or we can construct. So, first one is using uh, equilateral triangles, second one is using squares and the third one is using regular hexagons. Right. Now, we have to think about the order of uh, polygons around the vertex point. Here, in regular tessellation, the order should be always equal. So, we will take the vertex point as A. Uh, the order of polygons around point A is always. Here, 3 means uh, we have 3 uh, sides in a triangle. So, the order of polygons around point A is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So, each and every vertex point, the order is the same. So, it can um, have, we can create uh, regular tessellations using equilateral triangles. So, this is a regular tessellation. Now, when we consider, consider about point B, uh, there the order of polygons is 4, 4, 4, 4. Once again, each and every vertex point, this order is the same. Therefore, we can say uh, this is also a regular tessellation. Right. When here, when we consider about the order of polygons, uh, here it's around point C, the order is 6, 6, 6. Once again, 6 means the number of sides in the polygon. Uh, therefore, uh, this also can taken as a regular uh, tessellation. Right. Now, we will quickly move on to semi-regular tessellations. Here also, we are going to use only regular polygons, but this time we are going to use two or more regular polygons to construct semi-regular tessellations. Right. So, semi-regular tessellation is the tessellation created using two or more regular polygons and such that the same polygons in the same order surrounded each vertex point are called semi-regular tessellations. Right. Now, once again, uh, the order of uh, polygons should be the same on every vertex point in this semi-regular tessellations. Right. Now, these are some examples for semi-regular tessellations. We will quickly move on to the uh, order of polygons there. Here, the order of polygons around point A is 3, 3, 3, 4, 4. So, when we mark another vertex point, once again, uh, the order of poly uh, polygons around point B is 3, 3, 3, 4, 4. So, the order is the same. Therefore, we can consider this as a semi-regular tessellation. Right. Now, once again, there is a question for you. Is this tessellation a semi-regular tessellation? So, to find that, uh, we have to have a look uh, whether they have used regular polygons here. Yes, they have used regular polygons, regular hexagons and equilateral triangles. But what about the order of polygons? We have marked two points there, point A and point B. Around point A, order is 3, 6, 3, 6. Around point B, the order of polygon is 3, 3, 6, 6. Therefore, we can say uh, the order is different in two vertex points. So, this cannot be considered as a semi-regular tessellation. There are a, only eight types of semi-regular tessellations. So, here I have mentioned all eight types. So, uh, look at the first one. There we have used only regular hexagons and equilateral triangles to construct this uh, semi-regular tessellation. When we look at the second one, there we have only uh, squares, equilateral triangles and regular hexagons. In the third one, we have got squares and uh, regular octagons. Uh, in the fourth one, we have equilateral triangles and squares only. Uh, in fifth one, we have got regular dodecahedrons and equilateral triangles. Uh, in the sixth one, we have got equilateral triangles and squares. And in the seventh one, we have got regular dodecahedrons, squares and regular hexagons. 
Right, finally in the eighth one, we have got regular hexagons and equilateral triangles. Right, now we have discussed on semi-regular tessellations. Right, before winding up the lesson, I thought of summarize the things what we have learned today. First of all, we have learned what a tessellation is. A tessellation created by using only one shape is called a pure tessellation. A tessellation created by using two or more shapes is called a semi-pure tessellation. A tessellation created by using only one regular polygonal shape is called a regular tessellation. A tessellation created using two or more regular polygons and such that the same polygons in the same order surrounded each vertex point are called semi-regular tessellations. Right. Now that is what we have learned today. Right. Now it's your time to do the homework. We have got some exercises in your textbook. So please do, the, do all the exercises to be thorough with the lesson. And if you have missed the lesson or if you want to go through the lesson once again, you can go through the lesson through the YouTube channel, Channel NIE. Right. That's it for the lesson. So we'll see you in another lesson. Take care.